Hey everybody, welcome to The Real United States, and welcome back to Savage, Maryland. Now, as I had said in our last episode, we were going to do another episode here. Well, this is Savage Mill. This is a textile, was a textile mill, and it was built here in 1822. In 1820, and we're getting, you know, back in the very early part of our, our history. In 1820, Amos Williams and his three brothers borrowed $20,000 from a local businessman, John Savage. Now, $20,000 in 1820 was a whole big pile of money. But they used the money to build this textile mill. And to honor their very generous friend, they named it Savage Mill. And that's, I believe, how this town became known as the town of Savage. Well, what this mill was for was to make canvas, which in that era was an incredibly important commodity. And what it was primarily designed for, its primary purpose was to make sailcloth, sail canvas, for the clipper ships that sailed in and out of Baltimore Harbor nearby. that carried a lot, I mean the majority of products, in and out of the area. Certainly clipper ships were going all the way to the Orient and bringing back tea, a very important commodity to people in those days, much more so than today, although still a very important commodity. And the clipper ships, very, very fast, whence the name clipper, because they would clip time off of their runs, demanded a lot, a lot, a lot of sailcloth. So the Williams brothers capitalized on that. Now you can see this a beautiful old stone mason building, very nicely cut stone. And uh, I, another one of those things that just fascinates me. Um, I, I try to make this channel a little bit of a uh, little bit of education, a little history, and a little travel. And, you know, also, of course, the main theme of the channel, you know, this is just life here in the United States as we all live it. Now, the mill ran from 1822 and is constructed until 1947, just after the end of World War II. During that time, the canvas became in demand for other purposes. During an American Civil War, it was used for tents and cannon covers. So if you ever wonder where the cloth for all those tents you see in Civil War reenactments and movies and whatnots, the original Civil War, where those came from, it came from here in Savage, Maryland. Now, in the very last decade of the 19th century, from 1890 to 1900, it was also used for painted backdrops. The canvas was used with paint on it, paint what's called a matte painting, for backdrops in some of the very early motion pictures, the silent films. And then beginning in the 20th century, it was used for cots and for truck covers, the big uh, two and a half ton trucks, a deuce and a half. Those canvas covers on the back of military trucks, it was used for those. And it was also used for the duffel bags that service people will carry to carry their goods when they're being moved from one place to another. So that was very big demand for this in both World War I and World War II. And then finally, after World War II in 1947, the mill finally succumbed to changes in the economy and industry and demand. So anyway, now I've never been here to Savage Mill, but it is now been repurposed, refurbished, repurposed as a commercial center with a lot of high-end collectible shops. There's a bakery. There's a bunch of other businesses in here. So it's now this nice little shopping center. Never been here. We're going to go in. We're going to see what kind of scenes we can get to share with you. So the Savage Mill was not built all at once. I mean, the main structure that we showed you originally was the beginning, and it had a 30-foot diameter water wheel that ran off of the Patuxent River's water flow to power the machinery for the mill. But over the years, this place was here for over a century, there was expansion. Additional buildings were built as the business grew. And here's one of the later buildings that I think is just adorable. This is a brick building, of course, but it's, it's just one of those gorgeous kind of old industrial buildings. You can see here over my right shoulder, there's a, a, an old elevator that was used for moving you know, heavy loads up and down to and from the upper floors. And there's, of course, sliding doors that open to move materials in and out from the building. 
So I, this is just one of those things that I think is very, very quaint. And I love the balconies that are, you know, up here with the iron railings. This is so, so classic of late 19th century industrial architecture. That I just, I thought I would share it with you. We come around to the other side of the building that we opened with. And you can see here as the expansion took place, the brick addition with the big tower and there's a wind vane up on top, very quaint. I don't know if it really does it justice because I'm standing quite a ways in front of it, but this is a really large building for that era. I mean, there would have been a lot, a lot of work. This is why it took them two years to build this building to get the mill started. And it's, it's just breathtaking in, it, in its magnitude and its arrangement, the, the materials. It's, it's just a very pretty building. So I thought we'd come around here and give you one more shot before we move on. Okay, folks, this is one of the problems that you run into when you're covering these historic places, historic buildings. And that's that there always seems to be some discrepancy in the actual dates. Now, I had originally said that they borrowed this money in 1820 and they opened this mill in 1822, which is what my research told me. But this bronze plaque designating this as a National Historic Landmark says 1816. So without doing really extensive research, which I really don't have the, the wherewithal to do, you know, we're in the right era, but it's, you know, plus or minus four years here, I guess, four to five years, six years, of when this actually came to be. But this is not an uncommon thing for Beverly and I to encounter, where there are these little discrepancies in dates in the different sources you look at. So I just thought I'd point that out here at the front entrance of the Savage Mill. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pan a little bit. And uh, this is the uh, arched archway to the courtyard here at Savage Mill. Obviously these are the brick buildings. They're a little bit newer than the original stone structure. You see a sign here for the Ram's Head Tavern, one of those businesses I said that had come to be here in this repurposed millinery grouping of buildings. A beautiful little courtyard. If we can get a moving shot, we can walk you in there. Now, first, let me say that these buildings, the one we showed you here just before, on the back side, is actually the cotton shed. This building here is the spinning building where cotton then was spun into fibers. And then carding, this building down here, it says it's the carding building. These are all operations involved in the processing of cotton into fibers and then cloth. And I love these big, tall, double hung windows with all the, the panes. And you can't really see this on film, but that is the, seems to be a lot of it, the original pressed glass. It's got the ripples in it and whatnot, if you're familiar with that. So, it's a, some of these panes are more modern, but in the upper sash, some of those are the original old panes of glass from the second decade of, or third decade of the 19th century. Hey, look folks, they actually have a chair big enough for my fat butt. So they've preserved much of the inside of the mill, although it's been, of course, refurbished. But the original timbers and all of that has been preserved here. Now this is actually the tower. It's the tower the, that we showed you in the previous couple of scenes. When you come down through the courtyard, this would be essentially the main entrance to what is now a little shopping center mall-like thing that they've done and repurposed here in Savage Mill. Now we're not going to take you around and show you all the different shops and everything. I would make this video way too long, but <clears throat> there is a directory here and of course right inside the door there are these neat little, oh I guess, maps and uh, directions with the different things. 
Uh, Savage Mill does have a website, which I'm going to put in the description down below for those of you that are actually interested in visiting here. But it's just a really, really nice little place. The uh, tavern is right here. Swing around here for a moment. I'll show you that this is the antique center. I had talked about that there was a lot of high-end collectible antiques available here. And for those of you that maybe get the uh, anchor for a little something to eat when you're here, there's a variety of little shops right here is just inside the door of the tower is the Bonaparte French Bakery different little confections and breads and things there's a place to sit down in there it's very quaint I'm not gonna go in and bother everybody while they're sitting having their meal but anyway this is just a very gorgeous place and it's nice it's one of those things as you've probably noticed we like to see things that have been preserved and saved from our history and that have been repurposed so they still serve a function other than oh that's pretty you can actually go in and enjoy the environment there so this is one of those things that I thought was important here in the United States that we are trying to preserve these things and yet continue to use them so if you have questions or comments hey leave in the comment section below I love hearing from all of you I'd certainly love to know what you thought about your visit here to Savage Mill in Savage Maryland I try to get back to everybody I can, and I do love hearing from you, so please stop in and say hi. If you're new here, hey, pick subscribe, come along for the adventure, because we got lots more to show you. And as always, thank you for watching.